I'm told this is called chamomile tea. Warms the old bones. We'll talk about warming the old bones. A documentary started in the north, way up there, Ojibugamu, by Cheryl Weber, and then completed by Michael Wright, because Cheryl headed off to the other side of the world for one of her many challenging reports. So Cheryl and Michael, great to have you here. Thank you. Great. And you are representing the documentary Home and Native Land. Cheryl, tell us about your original motivation. You know what, I was really passionate about this topic because a lot of times when you see anything about Aboriginal people in Canada in the news, it's always the negative stories. And I think even their own community feel like, you know, yeah, there's problems that they want dealt with and they want to address, but at the same time, there's many, many good things happening in the community. And I think so we wanted to tell the other side of the story. We wanted to tell the good things that God is doing among Aboriginal Canadians and their successes as well. So you're up in the frozen north somewhere. Yes, it was great. So uh, as you know, Ujibugamu is an award-winning community by the UN for sustainability, and uh, they're doing amazingly well. At the same time, they still have some social problems with their youth. So their chief is so passionate about investing in youth. He took them up to near James Bay to go hunting on the land, reconnect with their roots, and really and mentor them. took you them. with them? Yes, yes, hunting. Hunting? There were some moments. Uh -huh. We had moose every meal moose burgers moose uh, spaghetti moose everything but it was it was good i you know i like adventure i enjoyed it and i yeah. and i liked learning about their culture so uh, you produced the first part of the doc and michael you did the second part now tell me about getting into her her vision right so i i had consulted with cheryl about what the original vision was and that was to find really good stories of people that are making a difference in their communities so we had, um, we had a gentleman by the name of Donna Merrow who had been on Full Circle but prior to the documentary uh, research that we were doing. And I looked a little bit deeper and I found that this was a guy who was not only successful in a musical way, but he was also mentoring youth in his community. And I really found that interesting. So I contacted him and I just found out that this, he was a wonderful family man who was doing such good work that we had to highlight him as part of this documentary. He was just nominated for Juno. That's uh, correct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at, uh, at a, a clip here uh, with a Cheryl did when she was up there. I basically came from uh, uh, divorced parents. And I fear that uh, that's where I'm going to. And I don't want that because I have two very beautiful children at home. They deserve what, what I didn't have. I want to stop this alcohol abuse that I have and this anger. Being out on the land has helped Casey get a new perspective. I kind of forgot a little bit about skinning, you know, respecting the land, and respecting the animals that we hunt. Is Casey you know I love Casey's story David something happened during that interview and I know you know what, what this is when God kind of steps in the middle of it and it almost stops being an interview and Casey and I we had this conversation about his life that was so profound you know he thanked me afterwards for making him think about those things but I know it wasn't me I know that it was just like God came into that conversation and I, I so admire him because he's like every other dad and mom out there he's trying to change his life for his kids you know, and it's, and it's an uphill battle, but he was one of the people I saw a real change in after that week. And one of the other uh, people, uh, part of this uh, particular documentary, one of several documentaries that we'll talk about, uh, was Donna Merrill. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, uh, nominated for a Juno Award uh, here in Canada for his music, outstanding mm -hmm. man. Uh, Michael, talk to me about your picking up the challenge right. and finding Don Amaro in Winnipeg. Right, Don really impressed me because not only is he a good family man and he has you know, a great life and for all intents and purposes, but what really impressed me was that he overcame 
uh, a path that he could have gone down. He grew up in an environment, one of the toughest neighborhoods in Winnipeg. He, he lived, came from a broken home, four brothers, and, and, uh, and having a single dad raised them. And what really impressed me was that he had to make a decision when he was a teenager whether to go down the path of alcoholism and, and drug addiction and kind of buy into what the people around him were saying. And he chose not to. And eventually he had an encounter with God that changed his life. And later, as you, you know, as people watch the documentary, you'll, I don't want to give anything away, but you'll see what happens. Uh, everybody needs to get this documentary, but take a little look of uh, one of the clips uh, that Michael produced. Oh, my days. As Don has connected with his roots, he's found a new passion to mentor the next generation within the local Aboriginal communities. Hey, Sean, what's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Have a seat, man. I work with young guys uh, in the studio. A couple of young young kids have come to me and said, "I really want to record some music. Would you help me?" And and uh, and in some ways, I, I try to help them kind of figure out how to tell their story through music. And and uh, Rashawn Henry is one guy that I like working with right now. He's a nine-year-old from Rosso River, and he's uh, a lot of fun in the studio. So my hope is I can live my life as an example, and that so what I do is I, I, I particularly youth, because I think they're the next wave of, of change. I hope that they can see that what they want in life they can have. They just need to really understand what it is they want. Nice. Sweet job, man. Thank you, Michael. I had the privilege of narrating uh, most of the documentaries. And Michael, uh, another one that you did was with Paul Henderson, the goal of the century. And I've seen a lot of specials on this hockey hero who's just been inducted into the Worldwide Hall of Fame over in Sweden, Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, and uh, so uh, you and I are talking about that as well. But, uh, but Michael, uh, you have seen the difference that can be made uh, when people actually call on what these folks who they would speak of as the great creator. <laughs> right. I, I've seen that in, in, in Cheryl's story with Chief Reggie um, and in Donna Merrill's story. You know, I think a life, all it takes is one decision in your life. And when it's done and you stick to that decision and the decision they made was to follow their creator, God and Jesus Christ. And, you know, a whole life has been turned around as a result of that because you, you know the stats. The stats aren't good for, for some of the Native communities. And I just see that God has made a difference when they embrace him and when they follow him with all their hearts. So in both these cases, in Reggie and in Don, uh, you see great examples of people making a difference in their community. I, uh, I also know a lot of First Nations people that I treasure. And uh, that's another reason I want to make sure that I have several copies of, uh, of, of these uh, documentaries.